how do we develop a method all right so we, now we come so 95 percent is over all the stuff that make us lose money and what we shouldn't be doing first thing i can't repeat this enough stocks are just incredibly risky things to buy okay as i said <clears throat> they can fall by 30 to 70 percent in one year and then take years to recover and it takes a long time to understand when i say understand it's really internalize this what helps is that if you have some kind of a software where you can go back to previous prices so you can live through that period there's a guy called ray dalio and he runs what is called what is probably the largest hedge fund in the world okay he runs something called bridgewater associates he thinks that a lifetime of experience and a team of three, four hundred bright people is not enough for him. The market situation, or the econo- he's 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 like an economist. Okay, he doesn't he looks at markets, he invests in bonds, in stocks, and gold, all kinds of things. But there is a YouTube of his views about economy. He talks like an economist. It's absolutely fundamental guy. He feels that one lifetime of experience is not enough when us was reducing interest rates when gold prices were going up and a lot of people thought that we are going to get into a hyper inflationary situation because the economists understand when the supply of money is too much sometime or the other it leads to inflation it's called a monetary theory of uh, so if you inject a lot of money it lead to inflation and it could lead to a hyper inflationary situation the kind of thing that people saw in brazil in the 1980s apparently you through a large supermarket if you entered there was a certain rate of the currency by the time you exited the currency rate has changed and you pay a different amount right or germany there you must have seen pictures in wikipedia and other places where people would carry a barrel of notes german marks to buy one bread hyperinflation there is a lot of worry that we are heading towards a hyperinflationary situation ray dalio pulled out old german newspapers of that time he pulled out old brazilian newspapers of that time and he made his staff go through it he himself went through it he had wanted to live that period okay it's difficult for us to do but the least we can do 5 7000 rupees is the cost of a simple end of the day price software Okay, you get the end of the day price. I would urge you, anybody who is serious about investing in the stock market, please choose the worst kind of periods. Say that I invested in Titan in January 2008 and live that period when the stocks fell by 66% over the next 10 months and see how it feels. This happens to entire markets much less. It happened in 2004. It happened in 1992, it happened in 2000, 2001, and it happened in 2008. So every few years it happens, maybe five, six years. But to stock, it's happening every week. If there is a CAG, if there is a problem with Maran over there, the Sun TV stock falls like a stone. If something else happened, Gitanjali Gems has fallen by 50% or so in the next few years, few, few days. Gold government announced a different policy, the same titan. It just fell like a stone in the next few days. This is happening to every stock. And only in some cases, it's got to do with speculation, it's got to do with the fact that somebody probably had a big position and he had to dump. So those are the things that I'm ignoring. But even to best of stocks, the, it has nothing to do, I keep repeating, it's nothing to do with the management nothing to do with sales nothing to do with profits nothing to do with you your broker your terminal nothing it is the nature of the stocks and the more we expose ourselves the more we prepare our mind for this the downside how how much we can lose the more careful we will be about these situations and the more prepared our mind would be when they actually happen because they happen every every few days every few weeks Indians don't invest in stocks and mutual funds. The reason they don't is that they just love guaranteed returns. So there's nothing better than a smooth, you know, 9%, 8.75% which the bank pays you, comes to your account. It's wonderful. If, you do, if you're not able to change that mindset completely and become 
and have a different part of your mind i'm not saying abandon have that we are all we advocate investing a lot of money in bank deposits because i think the safety of capital is a, is paramount in in any situation but if you are not able to see that this is a completely different animal and has nothing to do with a fixed income product then you have not assimilated the nature of the stocks very well finally <coughs> there are only two things as i said in market black and white up or down plus or minus you buy at a price <clears throat> and you sell at a price that's it there's nothing else which can determine your profit and loss it's common sense the lower you buy the greater is your chance the greater is the chance that you're giving yourself the more probable it is you're making for you to easier that you make money right it's as simple as that so the price that you pay is of absolute paramount importance in terms of your expectation of, re- of returns <coughs> i said <coughs> stocks are essentially risky which is essentially means it's a common term stocks are risky stocks are volatile there's a difference all financial <coughs> students would know the word volatility or anybody who has some scientific process in place would know that stocks are volatile which means they go up and down and so on there is statistical measure also which is volatility is standard deviation from the mean for you as an individual who is putting money in stocks you have to understand the difference risk by risk i understand only one thing risk of a capital loss you bought at 100 you are forced to sell at 90 for whatever reason you lost 10 bucks that is risk okay volatility is a statistical measure it's a completely different thing volatility comes from fluctuations and risk as i said equals your loss the difference between the two is very very vital volatility cannot be controlled at all it's in the nature of the stock you are not going to determine the price you can only play the pay the price and play the price in a way that your process dictates that you should be doing but risk can be controlled this is what separates the winners and losers in the stock market and clear understanding that stocks are risky they can lead to losses and this is how i'm going to control the li- control what goes up and down so wildly at times is the, that knowledge is really the crucial part of investing in stocks you should be focused totally on risk and completely ignore volatility because that you have no control over and that comes comes with it how do you focus on risk you focus on the business and you don't focus on the price okay when you are analyzing the business <clears throat> to give an illustration and anybody who has attended my uh, how to be smart with your money seminar would have seen this several times this is the yearly returns of sensex stocks are volatile i have taken only yearly if you take weekly if you take daily the volatility is going to be much more for instance today the market is shot up yesterday and today it will look like a you know straight line going up but if you take the same data and do what is called a five year rolling return which means instead of 90 91 92 93 up to 2012 if you do 90 to 94 and then 91 to 95 and so on five year data this is how it would look and you would notice the volatility is dramatically lower it's not it's fl- not fluctuating that much as the previous one in fact there are many more positive five year periods than there are one year periods we take the same data and do a 10 year rolling return 90 to 2000 91 to 2001 and so on this is absolutely even better much more calmer more positive 10 year periods all right so the lesson is by and large this is a direction of the market by and large the longer the term the lower is the volatility and therefore the lower is the risk of your loss okay you still need to know what price to pay but i'm going to come to that but in general you buy a stock you have to buy pre commit yourself to hold it for a very long time that's the only way you can control your risk while the stock remains volatile during your holding period that's the clear understanding what this means if you really look at the other end what this move means is a daily movement of stocks is just pure noise 
and we should have nothing to do with it. It is a business model of some people to make that daily noise. It can be a stockbroker, it can be the television company, it can be the website, doesn't matter. They have a business model to make that noise so that you come and go and you make, you know, make your trades and so on. But daily, even monthly moves are completely random. Nobody really knows. There's no reason to even bother about them. Now, <clears throat> to give you a very interesting real life example, if you look at the price of Hindustan lever, you will see it's just gone up very, very sharply. In 1998, sometime, this was in September, all right? I was, uh, some reason I was chatting with the CFO of Hindustan Lever that day. He had then subsequently, now he's the MD of Bosch in Bangalore. So um, he had a terminal in, in his, um, you know, stock price terminal in his cabin. And he looked at it and he said, did you know Hindustan Lever is in lower circuit today? When the stock had fallen so much, almost 10% it had fallen in one day. I'll never forget this. Why was Hindustan Lever on a lower circuit that day? because Russia was in big trouble. And what has that got to do with Hindustan Lever? Uh, because Hindustan Lever exports tea to Russia. Right? So this is what the market can be. This is how volatile, this is how irrational the market can be on a daily basis. That day, even though the move was so exaggerated and so huge, a 10% decline in one of the most blue chip, the one of the largest companies in India, even that was noise. That had nothing to do with the fundamentals or the reality. I've gone through this and I don't want to um, <coughs> get into that. This also I have explained to you. <coughs> um, all of these things that I have explained earlier. Now I'll come to the core part which is uh, what developing a process and what really drives the market. Now these are the two primary factors that you need to know. Earnings of the companies that you buy. It has nothing to do with the earning, overall earnings of the market. Right? Ultimately you put your money in a given stock. As I said you don't buy Sensex unless you buy an index fund. The earnings of the company is what determine the trajectory of the stock prices. The valuation is what is going to determine your profit or loss. If you buy a company, a simplistically put, if you buy a stock where the earnings are growing and if you buy it at a value that is not extremely expensive, moderately expensive or if, if you're lucky, if it's cheap, you cannot lose money in stocks. As simple as that. This is how co average people, common savers have made investments all these years everywhere. And it doesn't, this looks too simple. The reason why this too si looks too simple is because all that I said before, we are just too caught up with 20 different concepts and minute to minute stuff that we are exposed to and get bombarded with. Now, <clears throat> there are se some secondary factors, which is sentiment and flow of money. But these are, these only create opportunities for you. Now, if you imagine a situation where the company is growing, valuation is moderate and suddenly the sentiment is bad what a lovely situation for you just tailor made for you to buy that stock now <clears throat> having said that <clears throat> there is um, there is another fire uh, let me explain the profit uh, related factors a little bit now the entire market usually is focused on future profits okay a lot of analysis and a lot of uh, effort goes into trying to figure out what the price for the profit is going to be for the next year that's what the companies give guidance to analysts that's what fund managers and analysts are waiting to look at the key thing in all this is that when there is a disruption in profit which means the company comes and said oh we made a mistake uh, things are quite bad and profits are not likely to be as it was before. That is called a surprise. That is called an earning surprise. It can be positive, it can be negative. When you see a stock move dramatically, usually it is always accompanied by an earning surprise. In fact, there are studies in the US and there are funds in the US which only look at earning surprises. Typically, when the company is guided a higher profit 
the stock will jump and the, after the stock has jumped almost in 80 to 90 percent of the cases the stock continues to move higher as more and more people get convinced that this is a fundamental change in the outlook of the company and for practically for permanent reasons the stock prices the earnings will be higher and therefore the stock prices so if there is some way you are able to figure out earning surprises if there is something that you see you are by your process or by your understanding if you see that there is a positive earning surprise that there is nothing better than that that stock has to be bought market phases there are five phases of markets where the valuation becomes really low okay I mean sorry there are five phases of the markets but in only two or three cases where the valuation becomes really low now I mentioned the fact that you need to look at two things one is earnings growth and one is valuation the fact that the Indian stock market shot up from 2003 to 2008 onwards was a combination, was one of the best situations that you could ever have, which is the profits were growing very, very sharply and the valuation, the starting valuation was extraordinarily low. Okay? If you don't have that situation, which is what it was in 2001 and two just before that, profit growth was low, valuation was also low and then you would probably have a very low sideways lack of interest kind of a market and probably reading for the big, big move the big move happened immediately thereafter when profit growth was extraordinary as i said low valuation you will have a big bull market this would be a rare occurrence most of the time when people do an analysis of 15 years of sensex they include this period in this period, Sensex has gone from 2003, uh, Nifty, I'm sorry, Sensex has gone from around 6,000 to about 18,000 or 21,000 over this period. The great 14, 15% return that everybody talks about, that brokers and fund managers talk about in the long term, includes this extraordinary bull market period. This happens only once or twice in a lifetime if you really look at the overall market situation. Most of the time, you will be either in, in one or in five, which is an average sideways market. This is the time when earnings growth for a variety of reasons, uh, mostly related to the governance and related to the economy and how it's being managed or mismanaged, corporates will be under stress to be able to grow their profits. India does not have an extraordinarily pro-business climate and therefore companies would usually be under phase one or phase two and this is the phase where outstanding companies will put their best efforts together and keep their earnings growing and this is the period where you will be able to buy once in a while when the market crashes the same extraordinary stocks at a reasonable or at a low valuation all right so <clears throat> when we decide to buy a stock we most certainly would like to avoid three and four periods. These are the periods where in both cases the valuations were extraordinarily high. All right? In 2008, the overall Sensex P was 26. And at 26 Sensex P, which basically means that it was like, you know, among the highest since 94. In 94, the Sensex P was around 30, 37 or so. And the Sensex P hadn't been this high until right up to January 2008. In January 2008, you spoke to anybody, or in December, January 2008, you spoke to anybody, they had this massive rise in stock prices behind them, this tremendous amount of optimism, a lot of money was coming into this country, the rupee was very strong, okay, it had gone below 40 at that time, and people were not paying only, people were only looking at the profit growth that they have seen, and the business plans that were being hatched to, to earn much more higher profits in future. No attention was being paid to this crucial point of valuation. I'm not saying that the crash was inevitable. What I'm saying is that at, if you had bought stocks in January 2008 or in November 2002, you are going to make it very, very difficult for yourself to make money for the next three years, four years, five years. You have to wait for a long period of time. You buy extraordinary stocks, you will still make money. It's still going to be far better than your bank FD because long-term capital gains is zero in case of stocks and all you need is six seven percent return from stocks to be to be better than your bank FD, which is fully taxed but we want to be in a situation 
where we even if you don't have the favorable situa situation of an extraordinary profit growth which is what happened in 2003 at least we want to be a, in a situation where the valuation is extraordinarily low and i'll share with you virtually in the last chart some of the periods in valuation has been low this is a chart that a lot of people must be familiar with and it in it captures a lot of things that i talked about and it's a very popular thing a lot of people would have seen this the fact that the markets move in cycles and people who don't pay attention to earnings growth and who don't pay attention to the valuation and the price they're paying will usually move through cycles like this so they it starts with you know a period of optimism then it reaches a period of euphoria then the this is a place where everything is nice india is shining this is where the gdp growth has its highest inflation is low a lot of money is coming into this country huge amounts of investments are being planned and the killer valuation is among the historically highest levels after this level everything that's gone right has already gone right things can go only wrong how much wrong nobody knows if it's an average kind of a uh, period of correction the stock prices will fall, fall probably 5 10% over the next few years if it is a global issue and it wasn't there earlier now all markets are interconnected all money is interconnected the entire indian stock market is dependent on foreign institutional investors continued interest in that and if in that kind of a context is something goes wrong internationally the stock price can fall very very sharply so we would try to avoid these kind of periods and we would wait patiently with the stocks that we want to buy when the market comes down to this kind of a level and this happens periodically this is where i'm only talking about market climate so as to make sure that the valuation is in your favor and so that the price you pay is among the less uh, among the bottom 10% 15% nobody can time the bottom nobody can pick stocks exactly at the bottom but you want to pay as low price as possible because that alone is going to determine how much of returns that you're likely to get <coughs> i have gone through uh, this entire thing <coughs> and these are extraordinarily um, rare occurrences and if we get them that's absolutely fantastic now <coughs> to select a particular kind of stock that's going to give you high returns over a long period of time you have to utterly completely focus on business every country is different every period is different but i leave you with two three ideas on this count first of all completely ignore the day to day price changes because ultimately you want to buy if I, if i if i were to recap you want to buy great businesses at low prices at a situation when the market is down and with the objective of holding it for a very long period of time all right so you have nothing to do with day to day prices that is because businesses don't change on a second to second basis prices move in cycles costly to cheap and back stock prices can be wrong even for very long periods of time and that's your opportunity now let me come down to where i see as an opportunity for us as indian investors i've already hinted that we have about more than a billion population if you really look back most of the people at the at all levels are constantly increasing their consumption there are products that they buy regularly there are brands that they buy regularly there are services that they are willing they are, they are buying regularly if you look at the banking sector there are some of these companies like shriram transport penetrated really deep into the indian heartland they have almost the the managers of shriram transport know the truck operators like part of their family this is what they have achieved okay if you look at finance companies like magma finance in the east the entire area of bihar odisha west bengal these are the areas where not many of these banks and finance companies go they have almost like a not a monopoly but a clear run of those kind of areas business is risky but they are growing at 25 30% per annum nbfcs is not a business that many people look at all right 
and that because that's because of the past experience of having bought NBFCs and have having lost money. Look at the consumption uh, stories in this country. Look at companies like Nestle or Colgate or Castrol. At every stage, all of this, each of these stocks look very expensive. At every stage of the market over the last 10, 15, 20 years, in fact, I have so often said that who should buy, nobody should buy these companies. This was in 2003, 4. Nobody should be buying these companies because you cannot pay this kind of a price and make huge amounts of money in, in, in future. But we have always underestimated the fact uh, the, the consumption story in this country and the reason for that is that the government just does not have data about the informal economy. The actual GDP growth that you see does not capture the consumption that is happening in cash in rural areas and across the country. So I have a feeling that the opportunity really lies in three sectors. Banks and NBFCs, consumer goods companies and pharmaceutical companies. Pharmaceutical companies have a completely different story. If you look at, uh, if you look at an average person's reaction to a doctor and the prescription, you go to the doctor, you prescribe something, you take the prescription, go to the chemist and buy everything. You're not going to sit there and wonder, well, do I need this or do I don't need this? All right. I'm not saying this is good or bad. I'm not saying that the doctors are doing the right thing, they're prescribing correctly. I'm not getting into the issue where the pharmaceutical products should be priced higher or lower. I think they're exorbitantly priced given the ingredients that they're putting in. But the fact is that we as consumers unquestioningly buy the prescription that the doctor gives us. In fact, you would be horrified to know that go and try to tell your uh, buy that uh, this is a small thing you got a you know little cold why do you want to buy a tablet just take this you know maybe a home remedy try homeopathy it's cheaper they don't want to do it they just want to pop a pill better still they say give me an injection because their whole belief is that if you give an injection that's a proper treatment that they've gone through once again it's quite sad and i'm not going into the good or bad of it but this yeah, these are the three sectors that that are going to drive the growth of you know uh, that are going to benefit from the huge consumption and the huge population that we have today and every single time you see the stocks of any of these companies fall by 20% 25% or 30% i think they are worth buying and holding for the long term right once again let me remind you that <clears throat> After you buy, the stock will still fall. And most likely, it will certainly fall. And you will have to probably, despite me telling you that a stock can fall 60%, you'd still buy it, you know, and hold it and curse me and say that, what is this that he, uh, you know, I've, I've been told because <clears throat> this is not the price that I wanted to buy it at. Maybe I should have bought it at a much lower rate and so on. But <clears throat> this is the only way to make the make money in the stock market the process being three sectors when the stock falls buy hold it for the long term this is really the way the maximum money has been made in the stock market you would be surprised to know that a confirmation of what i am saying comes from the fact that the maximum gains have come from consumer oriented stocks and yet in this country we have 19 infrastructure funds and we have four fmcg funds all right which means that the fund managers have consistently felt that these stocks are expensive and these stocks have continued to go up not down let me recap the weaknesses that we suffer from because this is what is going to determine the losses and the losses is what we have to be careful about overconfidence and over eagerness to be busy too many de decisions made not mindful of high and low confidence levels because some because when the stock is moving we are so completely confident you know and we are unable to distinguish between our own levels of high and low confidence not mindful of major and minor bets the example that i gave that 
5000 rupees is diff- is a bet which is completely different in nature from a 50000 rupee bet when you have 5 lakhs in the bank frequently switch from risk takers or being conservative fixation on the short term Res- all this results in high turnover high costs and many small bets going nowhere probably leading to losses you should always be conservative and take large risks only when the time is right now <coughs> To recap, <clears throat> I have mentioned all of these things because I, you know, in given slide I've sort of sort of gone in all kinds of different directions. But just to refresh, buying good companies in market panic. If you see the price, you see the chart. This fall doesn't look anything. Now, fr- frankly, the share of HDFC Bank actually fell from 360 rupees to 155 rupees is more than 50 percent it's a 60 percent fall and then the price rose all right so the point i was making is 54 percent fall so the point i was trying to make is that a banking company solid company constantly expanding stock is down 50 percent opportunity you have nothing more to look about the company you don't have to go to the balance sheet you don't have to do a fresh spreadsheet you don't have to know any technical terms you don't have to do cash flow all the chartered accountants and CFAs in broking firms can do all of that for you this is a proven model competition is low profitability is high management is committed the stock is down what more do you want so it fell 54%, it went up 247%. So point number one, great companies, sharp fall in prices, buying opportunity. Buying idea two, this is another interesting strategy, people do SIP in mutual funds. All right. If you are not able to have a process and, and figure out that this is the right time to buy, if you are not comfortable seeing having bought the stock fell another 20 percent no fault of yours and you're holding it for the long term if you still don't want to suffer any of these things you can do a sip in the same stocks okay it's a fantastic strategy and the reason as i said to repeat 95 percent of all market moves are unknowable noise transaction costs and management costs are certain but performance is uncertain so passive investing or indexing works in this case pick large cap stocks from different sectors and do a SIP if you do a SIP for all of these we have back back tested this on different periods in the worst possible period you are putting in little bit of the money so you are mentally absolutely calm because you may have put 5000 rupees you still have 4,95,000 in the bank stock falls further you put another 5000 rupees these if systematic investment in a falling uh, blue chip stock will most certainly lead to a significant price appreci- I mean significant profits and returns over five to seven years there's just no doubt about that I'll spend about five seven minutes in explaining why I'm constantly repeating my faith in the blue chip companies but I'll come to that finally in the end buying idea three <coughs> okay these are s- small companies shunned by the market. They offer one of the highest risk reward equations. Once again, put very little money in this because you just want to have the lower the risk and increase your reward. How do you do that? You lower your risk by putting less amount of money. How do you increase the reward? Because that's what the market does. So this you have to get the best of both. If you put less you know that you're going to lose less but if you've chosen a small cap stock you know it can shoot up right this is how the risk reward has to work in your favor when the market is exceptionally cheap and the economic conditions are improving this is a time when these small cap stocks do you know you would be surprised to know an amara raja battery bought at in March 2009 or a V guard bought in 2000 small cap stocks have gone up some 300 400 percent over over this period so this is a time when to buy them now <coughs> buying idea four this is our a tool that we are using right now and I'll explain this and I'll also give you some specific stocks that not the exact stocks that we have recommended or we are suggesting but on that ranking these are the stocks that rank fairly high First, let me explain the concept. The concept is simple. A, the market 
um, price of all of these stocks are strong which essentially means that through all the ups and downs over the last one year calculated on a weekly basis we take 52 weeks of data all right having taken 52 weeks of data we see how it has moved on a week to week basis we create create an average value of their strength their growth then we sort these stocks so what we have is the strongest of the stocks against the market and the weakest stock against the market it started on the strongest to the weakest now what does it what does this table tell us it tells us that through 52 weeks of all ups and downs the market has decided not to sell these stocks one two three four these are the strongest which means when there's a seller there are strong buyers who have come in and pushed the stock up you cannot do this kind of manipulation in a large cap stock on a week to week basis across one year period you just can't do that you can do it over a few weeks you can just sell the stock it can happen a big buyer comes and sells or buys but that will be noise and that will not show up in the ranking so this ranking is a relative ranking of relative strength which are the strongest stock in the market so this is list or ranking number one then what we do is in the same sample of stocks we calculate the dividend yield which are the stocks where relative to the price the dividend is high why we go for dividend a lot of people say dividend yield is not relevant indian market dividend yield is two percent for us dividend yield is very relevant for two reasons one is that you can't declare dividend without a profit and two you cannot have a profit without paying taxes and three dividend is what you pay to outsiders okay who is going to write a check to outsiders if you don't have money in the company so it really shows the intention and the character of the company rather than anything else so dividend paying companies are companies where the co the company has substantial profits they they are paying high dividend because they have no need for that profit to be retained the profit is after tax all right so it's a best of situation it's a filter so you have, you've come to a set of companies which have got a high character as far as the shareholders are concerned okay and this is the hidden problem of you talk to people buying shares they'll all tell you about satyam because to convince people to buy stocks is very difficult because human mind goes to the worst of examples and leaves out you know hdfc and itc and all of that so this way you know that there is no satyam here but Raju is not going to declare dividends to you. He's going to take the money out. Or there's no money in the company. High dividend yield means relative to the to the dividend that the company is declaring, the price is low. So we have two rankings. Companies strongest to lowest, companies which are cheapest in terms of dividend yield. They merge the two. Okay? And we do this analysis not across the market. Because according to us, you can't compare an ITC with an Amare Raja. There are two different sizes of companies. So we, alone among in the market, we have five kinds of categories. We have mega cap, and then we have large cap, and we have small cap, we have mid cap, and we have micro cap. All right. I am ignoring the micro cap companies because it's very difficult, and <clears throat> I don't want savers to lose money in micro cap companies, especially since we don't know. We want to be absolute sure about, sure about the blue chip based on a combination of these two ranking among the larger among the mega cap companies these are the stocks that have come high itc hcl technologies dabur hdfc and tcs among the large cap companies is sundaram finance jammu and kashmir bank emphasis bajaj finance and supreme industries please remember i am not recommending any of these stocks i have described four different ways to buy good quality companies at reasonable prices this is not something that others follow this is our own formula and this is according to the list i have just eliminated one or two public sector banks from this because i am not sure of their bad loans quality otherwise some um, state bank of bikaner was there in one of the companies <clears throat> then axelia kali which is a software company in national building constructions a public sector company kajaria ceramics persistent systems and hawkins now based on this uh, on the methodology that we follow why i am sharing this with you because it will not be possible for you to do this ranking to get a sample 
get the relative strength 52 weeks strength do a ranking get a dividend it's, you can still do it a lot of this information is probably available in public domain but it's not easy so which is why i'm i'm sharing this if you want i can go back to this four techniques of buying once again for refresher if anybody wants it and <coughs> selling two more slides only one is <coughs> i keep saying buy small amount most importantly which i missed out saying earlier buy the money that you don't need buy with the money that you don't need if if you need even 1 rupee of this money that you're putting in the stocks you have no business putting it in the stocks you have to invest a clear surplus surplus that you have no immediate news or no use for over foreseeable future as well okay it's only then you can calmly invest in stocks the longer the term the better it is and as i said i'll explain to you my idea why it works this way a little, little later maybe sell if you need the money maybe there are emergencies so at that time you need to sell so that is your selling strategy or reduce maybe after your 65 because that's when you want to take lower risk <clears throat> don't let volatility or other people's opinions get in the way of smart selling decisions the fact that a stock has fallen by outstanding stock has fallen by 40 or 50% is not a reason for you to sell unless you need money it's a reason for you to buy all right because that's the opportunity you've been waiting for avoid making sell decisions based on tax concerns and commissions tax concerns should not be there but a lot of people say if i sell now i would have to pay taxes and so those are not the decisions at all finally this is a last slide <clears throat> we just pulled out a band for valuation to get a better sense of market timing if you were to wait <clears throat> there are several situations in the past 10 years at least and 10 years is not a very long time just an indicative for an illustrative purposes when the market valuation has gone down to a level of below 13 or below 12 all right just to give you a sense of where the market is today over 2014 market always looks forward and discounts the future so over 2000 march 2014 the earnings of sensex is we are discussing sensex here of the sensex 30 companies would be let's say about 1250 rupees eps of the 30 companies together would be about 1250 if you have to reach a valuation band of 13 that means a sensex level of 16000 today we are in 19000 something or so right so while the market is not very low or market is not very high either which means that anything that comes close to 16000 or below is going to be an outstanding buying opportunity of the stocks that you have listed down and pre committed to buy my sense is consumption stories banking stories and pharmaceutical stories there's no reason it's it's a large universe from ipca laboratories to sun pharma to dr reddies to unichem talent farm there are hundreds of high quality pharmaceutical companies same with consumer products same with private banks and nbfcs this itself is a list of 70 80 100 stocks and if you put a small amount of money on any of these when the market levels come down 16000 was there sometime last year or in 2011 and as you noticed it reached that level and the market shot up uh, over the short period of time that's the last slide but i am going to explain a little bit which i haven't done earlier about why i think great businesses are uh, are something that you should tie your money to or invest for the future the principle is very simple it's an economic logic it's nothing to do with the stock market the logic is that in a sea of inefficiency and corruption and where every part of our life is dominated by the state no matter what you do if you want to start a construction project in bombay you need 36 different kinds of permits and everywhere you have to pay money so in a sea of inefficiency and corruption these are the companies that cannot afford to be given the nature of their performance and the structure and accountability these are not the kind of companies that can take your money and run that is not the culture that is not the background that's not how they are run and that is proven model 
ITC is a proven model of the last 40, 50, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. HDFC Bank is a proven model for the last 20. We don't like many of the policies, but the fact is that thousands of people get up in the morning, go there, go to their banks, do a hard day's work, are accountable for what they're doing, have to create a qu quarterly profitability which is higher than the previous quarter, preferably, and that is a system alone that creates wealth. They are working for you. Some of the highest quality people, highly accountable and charged, focused on increasing the profits, start working for you when you become the shareholders of this company. That is the logic of investing in these blue chip stocks. It has nothing to do with whether the stock, stocks are better or worse, CNBC, money, money Life, none of those things are factors. You have the best of people being recruited there and they are working for you. That is the fundamental reason why you should be investing in high quality stocks. All you need to do, recap, is tune out all the noise and buy them at a price when they become reasonable. That's all you need to do. Right? Thank you very much.